Welcome to the Slingshot channel. A while ago the guys from minifactory.com contacted me and asked if they can do something for me. Turns out they have great 3D printing facilities and this means that they can print pretty much anything you like. So I drew up this here and they printed it for me. I really like it. Here it is pre-drilled so I can put in a steel nail or something else as a tip. This is for hooking in uh, loops. And um, this one here, this piece here, allows you to attach a little bit of paracord so you can lock it. You got your fins here and it is also front heavy already because it's nice and thick. So let's build a launcher for it. The launcher I want is supposed to be really lightweight. I want something that is really, really easy to carry. But of course it also needs to be long because otherwise it's not going to be powerful. So to make the barrel first, I want something really long, like two meters long, but it's also supposed to be lightweight. So I came up with this really, really thin and um, lightweight wooden pieces. There's actually a 30 millimeter by 10 millimeter wooden piece. And this is too weak and wobbly really to serve as a barrel for a powerful crossbow. So we take two of them and mount them together in the shape of a T. This gives it stability in all directions. First we're going to drill holes into one of the pieces and then we're going to attach it to the other one. Okay, now we have a very long and very, very straight, totally lightweight little barrel. For the fork, we're first tracing out the outline and uh, then we're using some solid, fine quality plywood. This is a 9mm piece and transfer it, then saw it out. This is the finished piece. Note that I drilled holes through this. If you want to attach flat bands, you can of course also change the shape accordingly. But I like to use uh, small Chinese tubes. Now we used wood screws to mount this to the barrel. And it's still totally lightweight. Now it is time for the system. Therefore, simply trace the uh, part to 9mm plywood or any other type. It really doesn't matter. Now that the part is uh, finished, saw it out two more times, although if you want to, you can leave the trigger guard and the hook for the uh, trigger rubber, uh, you can leave this uh, away, simply because you only need it once in the middle part. Three parts. The middle one with the extra trigger guard. Now let's make the trigger. Next, trace out the trigger part from the same 9mm plywood and saw it out. Next, you drill a hole through the trigger at the uh, marked location and also through the middle part of the handle and you put it in and then you trace the extreme points. First of all, the locked condition. And then the firing position. And once you have removed it, you see what parts you have to saw out to make room for the trigger. And now we use two component glue to put the pieces on one of the side plates. It's actually a good idea to use the time that the glue takes to harden to polish the triggers here. 
This must be really, really smooth. Go up as high as like 1000 grit sandpaper. Now you see that it's functional. Now it's time to put on the other side. But note that later on you can glue this on because you can take the trigger out like this. So it's not needed to uh, make this uh, detachable. As you see everything is nicely clamped in and ready for the last steps. Okay, as you see it's now functional. And, um, but of course it now needs to be rounded because it's really uncomfortable. As you can see, very safe mechanism. Now it's time to fit in the barrel part. Should work just fine. Yes. See, it almost works without screws. But of course we now have to stabilize it with wood screws. We now completed the projectile with the fat 9 inch nail in the front. And I think this is for sure deadly. Let's find out. <laughs> okay, unfortunately he broke off at the first test shot. And you can also see why. See that you got this uh, grid-like structure in here. I think that's because of the 3D printing. What I will do now is I will connect it again with some steel. All right, things cannot always work as planned. It seems to me that this little arrow is too brittle. But I thought so, so I also chambered it for the 20 millimeter steel ball like this. And now I changed the bands against three long super butterfly bands and it's now very easy to just load a 20 millimeter steel ball into this and fire away and still it is this wonderful lightweight design that's just over one kilogram total weight so you can really still shoot it as a pistol the longest pistol in the world <laughs> in order to make the pouch in a way that you can cock the weapon with it you see that I just put a little bit of string behind the pouch so that even if the ball is inside, as you see here, there is still a bit of a loop and this can hook behind the trigger. So this is how it looks like loaded. There is the ball in here. Let me show you how you can see it. There it is. And if you fire, then we're talking about pure destruction. <laughs> a few days later, um, the good people at myminifactory.com sent me a replacement arrow. And this time it's done with a different technique called 100% infill. This means that the grid-like structure is gone and it's massive inside. It should hold a lot better. But first, let's shoot with the steel ball. As you can see, I also changed the weapon a bit. Um, I added a bigger, more solid fork to give a little bit more room for the uh, arrow. And also I put in two band sets. This is the band set for the steel balls. And this is the band set for the arrow. And the band set that you don't need, you simply hook, hook it behind this and then you're ready to shoot with the other band set. Loading is pretty easy. You simply pull a little bit, like this, and then you have fingers behind this, draw back, and put the steel ball in. Loading the uh, rocket is fairly easy. You simply hang in the arrow like this and now we are ready to fire almost a hit okay let's try again <laughs> All right, 
it hit one of the uh, big blast bottles that was pressurized, therefore the nice little bang. But you can also see that it still sticks into the oak here. Uh, and that's the reason why I'm not increasing the rubber strength. Since this is already kind of very hard to get out of the wood. And if I would make this stronger, then probably it would no longer move uh, in any way. I really like this weapon because it's so lightweight and uh, powerful. And also it is really unusual. It's probably the world's longest pistol. <laughs> So this is the last video you get to see from this place because we're moving, we're actually packing up. And uh, while packing everything in, I found this old judo picture, uh, a 33-year-old photograph of mine. See if you can identify me on that picture. Leave a comment below and um, then we'll do a raffle and you might be in for a nice surprise. Anyway, I hope you like this because that's it for today. Thanks and bye-bye. Yeah.